All right, guys, I took the drawer system out of the Forerunner last night and started working on these little cubby holes here. So this is like your factory. Um, I don't really know what you call it. I guess like a toolbox thing. But it's got a lid to it right there. And then there's a black box inside. Well, I took the black box out so then I can have more room to store stuff in here. And then I took this whole panel out here and saw what was inside of here. And then I just cut that out. And then I put some of this um, protective piece on it just to wear something nice where you don't catch your skin on that plastic being cut. And um, it's not the best spot, but I mean, it fits this fire hydrant in here pretty good. So you can fit a bunch of stuff and then you can come in on this side um, that's the vent right there that looks like this and i forgot that i crammed all that carpet in there so that's just gonna get wet um so i gotta figure out what to do about that but anyways this is an idea of trying to get more storage because I'm running out of space with all the stuff that I take camping. And I'm trying to figure out how to organize the roof rack again. So I took the ski racks off, left this pack out, the solar panel there, and then the rifle case. I am trying to get this, um, Rooftop tent, it's a clam shell, so it opens from the back like a book like that. And I ordered it from Bama Car on Amazon, so it's a you know, it, one of the cheap ones that's like 1500 bucks. But I've seen a lot of reviews, and I think it would work perfectly fine for what I wanted to. But the cool thing is, is that you can mount stuff on top and on the sides of the rooftop tent. And if you've got too much weight on the top, you can just buy heavier um, pound struts like that right there and put on it. I don't think that should be a problem, but I'm also thinking of taking this glass out and either putting diamond plate up there. Now and then I can mount stuff. I'll probably leave that glass since I can look out I can look over my right shoulder and see there, but for like blind spot, you don't really see through that window. So I might just take it out. And it's a shame because I got some really cool stickers, but that, that might come in the future. I'm not really busting tail to get that, you know, taken out and replaced right now. But I am looking for space for the rotor packs and stuff like that but i won't need that if i can get a swing out and i'm trying to decide if i should weld a piece of two by two like take this bumper off weld a piece of two by two going across and then build and bracing up to this body line here i probably won't even wrap it around to be honest i'll probably just bring the bumper here to here and then put some steel plate on top of the two by two and i don't know yet i'm trying just trying to think of like boxing it out and then putting swing out like a swing out mount right here and either doing a double swing out because my main thing is i want to tire and then double jerry cans here one for fuel and then one for um water so i'll be running like the front runner water spigot jug here that way then when i swing it out um kind of want the full swing out so when i swing out it comes out to here and then i could drop like a aluminum um, table right there and then i can set up kitchen and stuff like that but the only thing about those 
you have to be able to pivot that kitchen, that swing out, out to here. Because when you have a drawer system and you pull it out, you don't want to be cooking and then you forget something and pull out your drawer and you can't pull it out because your kitchen is set 90 degrees right here. If that makes sense. But yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to dial in this forerunner. I've been on enough camping trips and I'm never really satisfied of how, how like I camp. So, and then another thing is solar panels, trying to, you know, get that dialed in to where, <clears throat> like right now with what I'm doing, I can get four days and that's with charging the generator just out of the refrigerator. That's not, you know, using the generator for anything else. It's just powering the fridge. So, but we'll see. And I also ran this chainsaw yesterday. I got one slab and then it started raining on me. So from here to here, my max cut is 45 and a half inches. So I know I can run this mount all the way to about here, but that's only eh, seven inches that I'll get. So that's what, 52, 52 and a half or something like that. So I'm still, I'm still not um, super wide, but 45 and a half, I mean, that's a pretty wide um, slab to cut. I mean, that would be a, that's a beautiful width for like a table or whatever. So I don't know what size these are. These are probably about 36. So no, there ain't no way that's 36. two foot so 24 so that's yeah that's 48 right there on three two and a half inches shy of that so yeah that's pretty wide all right trying to test out my new microphone Roll up this toilet paper. Stick this in here so it doesn't blow away everywhere. All right, the other day, I got this um, Badland shackle connected here. Got the winch on the portable winch mount on the front of the Forerunner. And right now, I'm supposed to get my owning in today. So I'm gonna take those solar panels off of the top. See how that looked. So then I recoated the rear axle. <clears throat> All right guys, super excited. Just got my new microphone in. I got these off of Amazon. I'll, uh, well, they're right over here. Let me. The brand is. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Madu. But it's two microphones. Comes in a little case like this. Flip it up. You can put your microphone. Um, both microphones in there. And then click, connect your S charger right there. And then you can charge both of them. But it's got a little um, fuzzy wind dampener on it. So this is really going to help um, when I try to record outside because like 99% or basically 100% of my stuff is outside. So I'm supposed to be getting my OBS 180 on in today. I'm going to mount it on the driver's side here. Uh, I haven't done any measurements on lengthwise or like from here to here. So whenever that comes in, we'll just do it then. I guess I need to take these bars, these handles back off. Um, I got the Milwaukee pack out off. I got the Plano rifle case that's off. 
Um, I got the solar panel. I'm taking this off. I got to find a T30 and put it in my drill just so then I don't hand screw it. Save your wrist, guys. Don't, if you got a drill, use a drill. So, doing that. And then I've been cleaning the undercarriage because going to the beach a lot, I'm getting a lot of um, salt underneath. So, I'm just cleaning it. And then any spots that are bad, I am touching it up with some black spray paint. So, um, and then I also did some interior work. I got the drawers out right now. And I put the old grill back in with the TEQ. For people that don't know, TEQ is Japanese for a Toyota. And they spell Toyota with a D at the end. So, um, what else? I still got the kick ass shower tent up there. But I did order from Bama Car off of Amazon the, um, the rooftop tent and it's the, it's the clamshell. So when you install it, it opens from the rear hatch up. I don't know when exactly I'm supposed to get that in, but I'm pretty excited about that too because I'm going to try to put roof rails on top and mount my awnings on each side. I'm going to try to um, put solar panels up top and then I'm going to try to do two rifle cases just for more storage. And if that's too much weight, then I've got to put uh, heavier shots for the tent. I was wanting to show you guys something else right quick. It's wherever the ski racks are. Oh yeah, I did buy some six inch light pods from Harbor Freight. They're on sale right now. Um, they may not be on sale when you see this video, but they look like this. Let me see if you can see them. Oh, the lighting's really bad. But it's just a simple six inch uh, spot LED. But I was thinking about doing this with the ski racks. Uh, Harbor Freight sells these magnet mounts for your toolboxes and i've got to get some bolts that fit that thread and then i was going to mount those magnets to the rhino rack uh, ski mounts and then i was going to magnetize them like right here and then magnetize another one here I don't know how well that's going to work because I got all that roof rack stuff up there. But that was another way that I could mount the fishing poles. So <clears throat> there's a brand out there called Sea Sucker. I think that's the name of it. And they make vacuum seal um, suction cups. And a lot of people are using those to mount their fishing poles at that angle because instead of mounting your 12 foot rods here you can actually put suction cups here and mount your 12 foot rods going that way but i'm the type of person that i have a bunch of stuff on the roof rack so i don't know how well that's going to work but oh yeah and also shout out to extreme led um i've had that light bar for not the same one but i've had light bar in that same style and same company for at least four to five years and one day uh, one of these sections for the white stopped working so i contacted them uh, hoping that they were still in business i think they still are in business but extreme led they have affordable light bars and i sent them that light bar and i believe they sent me a new one and it was at no cost so i love that aspect 
This is from hood solar panels right here. The solar panel itself is delaminating. So um, I sent photos of them and they were like, you have a barcode right here at the top right corner. And um, so I took pictures of that and sent it to them. Now I'm just waiting on them to tell me or to see if they're going to replace it or not. Because to me, it looks like trash because it's just delaminating. I know I said in a previous video that it, it kind of like matched the truck. But in all honesty, um, it doesn't look that good. Like it doesn't look like a solar panel. It just looks you know like the laminates coming off i don't know how how much further it's gonna go but oh well so here's the roof rack almost basically bare I've got to figure out how to mount that shower tent because I don't like the mounts on it. But yeah, I did wire these little six inch lights and wired them into the reverse lights. So they sit off the bumper and shine at an angle. So this is what they look like right here. I wish there was another way that I could um, configure it, but um, I won't truly really know until I get the tent in, stuff like that. But I just took the vacuum cleaner. <clears throat> I washed the WeatherTech mats out. They were covered in sand, and then I just vacuumed all the carpet again got a little bit of a disaster here but it's going to come together pretty soon and I don't know where UPS had it I've been waiting for the owning all day alright guys we got the owning on See it, Buster? The OVS 180 Onan. So, the um, hatch door does hit the aluminum there, but doesn't mess with anything. I think it's okay as long as I can get under here, which I'll probably have to duck once I get the weight back in the forerunner. But um, basically, I strapped it right here to this corner. And then that's how I'm pulling that side. It's got a little bit of sag to it. I could probably pull it more. But uh, I just haven't. I can pull these ratchet straps some more. But sun's going down, and I'm about to put the awning back up. So these legs here, they collapse, they'll grow up. This one and this one. And then you swing left, and then you swing right in. And then I've got these two 
leg poles here that go in this hole and drop down and the same in the other corner and that is for when you zip the line the liner and that's about it